Hi, Movie Recaps here. Today, I will show you a horror film from 2009 titled Jennifer's Body. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins inside a prison, where inmate Anita Needy Lesnicki receives tons of letters and gifts from people concerned about her sanity. Among all this stuff, there's a picture of a boy, Chip Dove, that she keeps near her bed. During lunch, she attacks a doctor that wants to improve her diet, so Needy is taken to solitary confinement, where she starts telling us her story through flashbacks. It's two months ago. Needy lives in Devil's Kettle, Minnesota. The name comes from a local waterfall that goes into a hole but doesn't come out. Researchers have thrown many things in there, like balls, but nothing has ever resurfaced. The boy from the picture, Chip, is Needy's boyfriend. She's also got a best friend, Jennifer Check, who is a cheerleader and considered a babe. People can't believe she is friends with a dork like Needy, but they've known each other since childhood. Some students even tease Needy, saying she's gay for Jennifer. One day, Jennifer asks Needy to come with her to a bar to attend a concert by indie rock band Low Shoulder, which she's been following on MySpace because she likes the singer. Needy says she already has plans with Chip, which Jennifer disapproves of, so she pressures Needy into changing her mind. Needy gives in and agrees to be picked up later. In the evening, Needy changes into an outfit Jennifer would approve of while hanging out in a room with Chip, who says it's weird Needy can tell the moment Jennifer arrives without looking outside or even hearing a doorbell. He also points out Needy is always doing whatever Jennifer wants her to do, which Needy disagrees with. She says they just happen to do the same activities because they have tons of things in common. Chip thinks it's exactly the opposite. He claims they have nothing in common. They go downstairs to find Jennifer already waiting inside the house. She calls Chip jealous for criticizing the dive bar they'll be going to. When the girls make it to the bar, we see Chip is right about it not being a club. There are other students there as well, like Craig, a football player who tries to hit on Jennifer and is quickly dismissed, and Amit from India, an exchange student. When the band arrives at the stage, Jennifer mentions they're definitely from the city and wishes there were more stylish guys like them in their little town. She grabs Needy and drags her with her to meet the band, and they get to chat with the lead singer, Nikolai Wolf. Needy asks him why a city band like them is playing in the middle of nowhere, and Nikolai says it's because it's important to connect with fans even in horrible places. Needy doesn't like that answer, but Jennifer doesn't care. She offers to buy him a drink, which he accepts. While Jennifer goes to make the order, Needy entertains herself by playing with the pinball machine and ends up overhearing Nikolai talk to his band members. He's telling his bassist that Jennifer is what they need because she is obviously a virgin. Needy interrupts them to defend her best friend's honor and calls him a creep. Then she goes back to Jennifer to tell her about this conversation, but she only finds offense in the fact they thought she was a virgin, which isn't true. The concert starts shortly afterward, during which Jennifer holds Needy's hand. Needy's attention isn't on the music though. She notices a spontaneous fire starting in a corner of the bar and quickly spreading. Soon the flames are engulfing the entire place, and while people run away or die crushed, Needy grabs a shocked Jennifer and takes her to the bathroom, where they escape through the window. Nikolai finds them outside, not looking too bothered by the tragedy, and he gives Jennifer his drink before inviting her to join the band in his van. Jennifer accepts, despite Needy's protests. Needy goes back to her house and calls Chip to tell him what happened while crying in fear and worry. Suddenly, someone rings the doorbell, so Needy asks Chip to stay on the line while she goes to see who it is. It turns out there's nobody at the door, so Needy hangs up and returns inside, where she hears some noises. When she enters the kitchen, she's startled by Jennifer, who is covered in blood and has a glassy look in her eyes. She smiles with her teeth covered in blood as well, before going to the fridge and taking a chicken that she starts eating like an animal. When Needy tries to stop her, she hollers at her with a monster-like sound, then she vomits a trail of black, spiny fluid. Worried, Needy leaves the kitchen to find her phone and calls for help, but Jennifer instantly appears in front of her and pushes her against the wall as she touches her inappropriately. Jennifer is about to bite her neck, but suddenly changes her mind, so she pulls away and leaves the house. Needy spends the whole night cleaning the kitchen floor. The next morning, Needy is still in shock at school while remembering the promise she made to Jennifer when they were little kids, she would never tell on her. When Jennifer arrives at class, she acts as if nothing weird has happened and is very apathetic about the bar tragedy. Their teacher, Mr. Robluski, gives a touching speech about the loss of their classmates, to which football captain Jonas Gazelle cries, but Jennifer only keeps callously commenting on it. After class, everyone in school is grieving, and all extra activities have been suspended. Needy tries to tell Chip about Jennifer, but he thinks it's the grief talking, and that she should see a shrink. Their chat is interrupted by Colin Gray, an emo friend of Needy who tells her he's glad to see she came out of the bar okay. Meanwhile, Jennifer approaches Jonas, who was best friends with Craig and is deeply hurt by his death. Jennifer tells him she was the last person to ever talk to Craig, and that his last wish was for her and Jonas to be a couple. 
Jonas accepts to go with her into the woods, where they start making out. But he keeps being distracted by the fact Jennifer feels very warm, and a bunch of animals is now surrounding them. Jennifer gets his attention back by touching him intimately. She also tells him he'll reunite with Craig soon before opening her mouth in a demonic shape to eat him. In the parking lot, Mr. Robluski hears Jonas screaming and thinks he's just crying with grief. But he soon catches on and enters the forest to see what's going on. He finds Jonas' body being eaten by a deer. The police pick up the body a couple hours later, and Jonas' dad promises he'll find and destroy his son's murderer. At her house, Needy is cooking while listening to the news on the radio saying Low Shoulder has become heroes after the fire. Her mother enters the kitchen then, and tells her she dreamed of Needy being nailed to a tree, expressing worry over one day not being able to be there for her daughter. Later on, after bathing in the lake, Jennifer calls Needy to tell her she's having a great day, and we see her burn her tongue without pain. But Needy hangs up on her after Chip calls her and asks her to see her at the park. When they meet up, Chip tells her about Jonas's death, so Needy keeps him company to comfort him. Days continue to pass and the school keeps on mourning, except for Jennifer, who is as peppy as always. Their little town has become famous around the country, and the press couldn't get enough of their drama. The song Low Shoulder played the night of the fire becomes a hit nationwide and almost an anthem in town. A month after the tragedy, Mr. Robluski tells his class that the band is accepted to come and play at the school spring formal for free. They'll also be donating some of the profits of their new single to the families affected by the fire. Needy thinks they're scummy for using them as a publicity stunt and reminds everyone that she was there the night of the fire and knows the rumor of the band saving anyone is a lie, which causes her to argue with a classmate that is a big fan of them. Class ends before it can escalate and Needy leaves with Jennifer, who is looking very sick. When Needy comments on it, Jennifer says it is wearing off. They're suddenly approached by Colin, who asks Jennifer out, but she turns him down. When Needy says she thinks he's cool, however, Jennifer changes her mind and tells Colin to come by her place later. In the evening, Needy goes to Chips to spend the night making love. Meanwhile, Colin is driving to the dress Jennifer texted him and is rather confused when he arrives in an abandoned house that he must enter through a window. Following the sound of music playing, he finds a room filled with burning candles and Jennifer waiting for him there. He quickly guesses this is not her actual house and Jennifer distracts him with kisses, but when her eyes change colors, he steps back. Jennifer grabs him and says she needs him to be scared, so she breaks his wrist and throws him on the floor so she could start feeding on him. Back to Needy, she starts having hallucinations while still being intimate with Chip. Blood appears to be leaking from the roof and a wounded Jonas and a demonic looking Jennifer appears sitting nearby. At first, Chip thinks her groans are from pleasure, but soon he catches on to the fact she's truly upset and stops touching her to comfort her. Needy is too disturbed to continue, so she gets dressed and leaves in her car. In the middle of the road, she almost crashes against Jennifer, who is covered in blood again and is now jumping on Needy's car window, but she falls off when Needy drives back at a high speed. Needy returns to her house and falls asleep on the couch, crying and dreaming of Jennifer. She wakes up a few moments later and moves to her room, and as she gets in the bed, she discovers Jennifer is waiting for her with no blood in sight and wearing only panties and one of Needy's t-shirts. Jennifer starts kissing her, and after some initial hesitation, Needy kisses her back, only snapping out of it when Jennifer starts touching her as well. Needy is freaking out because of what she saw earlier, so Jennifer finally tells her the full story of what's going on. The night of the fire, Low Shoulder took Jennifer to the waterfall and ties her to the ground to sacrifice her to a demon in exchange for fame and success. The guys stabbed her while singing Jenny to her, then they threw the knife in the waterfall. For some reason she didn't die, she just woke up, not remembering anything, and found her way to Needy. She wasn't able to hurt her because Needy is her friend, so after leaving her house, she took the road and came across Ahmet, who escaped the fire but nobody knew he was alive, so she took him into the woods with her and fed on him. Now Jennifer knows that whenever she's full she's unkillable, and she demonstrates this to Needy by cutting her arm and letting the wound instantly heal itself. Disturbed. Needy asks Jennifer to leave, which she does by jumping out of the window without getting hurt. Needy assists Colin's funeral a few days later, where his emo friends and his mother argue through their grief. Colin gets a memorial at school, and students are given classes about the buddy system and dealing with grief, but nobody seems to care anymore. They've moved on. Needy hasn't, so she starts doing some research at the paranormal section of the school library while avoiding Jennifer. She discovered his friend is now possessed by a succubus, a demon that must feed on flesh, because the ritual had gone wrong thanks to Jennifer not actually being a virgin. The only way to destroy her would be a blade to the heart while she's weak. When Chip comes to her and talks about the incoming dance, Needy warns him not to go and tries to tell him Jennifer is evil now, but he doesn't believe her. Needy says she'll go to the dance but not with him because it's not safe for them to be together now. 
When the night of the dance finally comes, everybody is getting ready for it. Chip is given a bottle of pepper spray by his mom, who is worried about his safety after what has happened to Jonas and Colin, and Jennifer tries to hide how sick she looks with makeup. While Needy searches for a friend at the dance and endures Low Shoulder's performance, Jennifer approaches Chip at the park and tells him Needy has been cheating on him with Colin. She starts making out with him, and soon he's asking her to take her somewhere else, so Jennifer takes him to an abandoned pool house. Chip isn't able to kiss her anymore because it's beginning to feel weird, so Jennifer throws him in the pool to start shaking him around. Meanwhile, Needy feels something on her lips and realizes Jennifer's got Chip. She goes to his house and his mother tells her he took the park shortcut to go to the dance. Needy goes down that way and finds the corsage he bought for her on the ground. When Chip cries out for help, Needy follows the sound of his voice and enters the pool house, only to find Jennifer has already started to feed on him. Needy jumps into the pool, causing Jennifer to get away from Chip, who gives Needy his pepper spray. When Jennifer comes closer again, she sprays her eyes, which makes her throw up on them before levitating out of the pool. Chip and Needy get out of the pool as well, and Needy tells Jennifer she's always been a bad friend and insults her in various ways. Jennifer intends to attack her for this, but as she comes closer, Chip impales her with a pool skimmer. It's not enough to kill her though, so she just leaves through the window while Chip dies in Needy's arms. A few moments later, Needy is back at her house, thinking about what happened and deciding on a plan. After changing into clean, dark clothes, she goes to see Jennifer, who is at her house going through the school yearbook to choose new victims while looking sick because she couldn't feed. Needy breaks in by smashing a window and attacks her with a precision knife, but Jennifer has enough strength to fight back and even levitate a bit. She bites Needy on the arm before she cuts a cross on her stomach. And after struggling in the air, Needy tears off Jennifer's matching friend necklace, causing her to let go of her and fall on the bed. Needy lands on top of her and stabs her in the heart, effectively killing her. But she's caught in the act by Jennifer's mother. Back in the present, Needy tells us that if you are bitten by a demon and survive, you gain some of its abilities. Needy can levitate now, so she uses that power to escape solitary confinement through the window, then uses super strength to simply walk through the grills outside. She makes her way to the road next to a river, where she finds Nikolai's knife and the object scientists have thrown into the waterfall. As the sun rises, she manages to hitchhike a ride to Madison, where Low Shoulder is staying in a fancy hotel. The band is living the best life now with fans, money, and drugs. That is, until Needy finds them and murders them all. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.